<laughs> Hello. <laughs> Hello, and welcome to this week's episode of the Nota Podcast. It's been like two weeks. It's been a minute. We didn't post like anything in in January, but it's February now, and look at us. Well, is it Feb? Well, yeah, I think. So. Daniel, what day is it? <laughs> Today is the 29th. They'll this will come out in February. <gasps> it will be in February. Yeah. <laughs> Hello, and welcome to this week's episode of the Nota Podcast, where we talk about movies and TV shows and other things that we find interesting. This week, we are talking about the movie Knives Out. It's uh, the Glass Onion one, the second one, the Netflix one. It's cool. Uh, I'm one of your hosts, Eric, and the other host uh, is Daniel. Ah. I have a fear of my name. Ah. <laughs> I'm scared. <laughs> Um, this, that is me. this movie came out like the very end of last year. So it is like, you know, look at us recording last year movies. You know, Daniel was great. They're still fairly new. Okay. <laughs> no. Okay. <laughs> uh, but this, this is a solid one. I, I remember when we did the first one and that's when you just watched the second one as well. And you were like, dude, the second one, pretty solid. Not as good as the first one, but it's pretty solid. And I was, was like, good. sick. So, okay. Let's jump into this movie. So, it all happens during the pandemic. It's set in May of 2020, right? Mm-hmm. And it it all, like, the movie opens up with, like, um, this, this scientist dude, this, like, political news lady, and this, like, fashion icon... And this internet influencer dude all receiving a box from this... Well, the political news lady, she's actually a governor. She's a governor. I'm not going to lie, I didn't pay attention to her. Even though yeah, she's one she, of my she's... favorite actresses in this movie, I didn't yeah. pay attention to her. <laughs> she she is a bit bit more important than a political news yeah, she, lady. Yeah. Um, but they all get a box from this billionaire... Uh, dude, his name is Miles Braun. They they make a funny uh joke in this movie that is a uh, never bet against Braun, and it was like Haha, like LeBron James, eh, get it? Never bet, uh, never bet yeah, against Braun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And mm-hmm. I thought that's what they were referencing. That went over my head. Yeah, I thought that's what they were <laughs> referring to because it's one of like the first like kind of jokes in the movie is like, oh, don't bet against Braun, and I instantly just thought of basketball lebron james but uh miles braun is this like billionaire co-founder of this like huge tech group called alpha that wants to like rejuvenize the energy crisis essentially yeah right to like fix the energy crisis and he s- and all of these people are like connected to it yeah so he sends like all of these people are his friends quote quote friends and he sends them all this this crazy like mystery box to invite them to his murder mystery game at the glass onion mansion that he has on his private island in Greece. <sighs> fucking fucking elitist bastard. Um, on an island in Greece. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um and so they all get this and then we also see our main Louisiana man, I don't know what his, you know, region is, but the Blanc guy from the first one, the only reoccurring character, also yeah, gets he's... a box. Mm-hmm. And we're like, but wait it's a minute. It's matched, right? Yeah. No, no, no. no. We well, don't know this We yet. don't know that. Nope. It's just he, he gets a box, and then they all show up to the docks, and they get they get sprayed by some magical cure. <laughs> Open your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah dude it mo- more looks yeah. like a shot to the throat like yeah it's like, just like a cum a, shot uh, that's like yeah it's we, a throat with, coat like a <laughs> throat coat that's what like, they call some teas dude, dude a throat there's tea. coat? yeah there's tea that's called no, throat coat sh- no mm-hmm, 100%. shot yeah i, I promise throat there's a tea coat. there's a tea that is called throat coat and it it, it helps 
Let me just coat helps. that throat. Yeah, exactly. But that's that's what it thought. Yeah, same. <laughs> but uh, so they get they all get on the boat, and then they get to the island, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then, uh, Braun is like, "Yo, Detective Blanc, you're not supposed to be here at my murder mystery game. One of these Dingleberries must have invited you to play a prank on me." Yeah, cause yeah, cause they're like they're it's a little it's like they're they have like reunions where they all get together and the theme of yeah. this one is murder yeah. mystery. Yeah, last year's it was just on a yacht. <laughs> yeah, um, is is what whiskey says. Um, but so they get uh, they're all in the glass onion hanging out having a good old time, and um, what's her name the the fashion lady. She's she's twirling around. Some some things are going down. People are getting like angry at each other, sort of, kind of like passive aggressive angry. And at this point, like, the movie has kind of given us like hints of who the killer is gonna be because we all know that it's a murder mystery because the first movie was a murder mystery, but this one is like an active game of Clue. Like yep. an active game of Among Us because they make a reference in this movie to Among Us. Yeah, because he starts like, Blanc beautiful. starts off the starts it off by playing Among Us. Yeah, in in the bathtub with celebrities, which was hilarious. Yep. Miles, his like um, his like mantra, I guess, is like. That he he wants to change the world or like something I don't forget the exact phrase. It's like he wants to be in he the wa- room with Mona Lisa no, as he the wants... world changes or something. No, no, he it? wants his name to be mentioned in the same sentence as the Mona Lisa. Right, that's what it is. So he 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 rents the Mona Lisa. He owns the Mona Lisa. No, he's renting it. No, he bought it. No, he's re- he's 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 holding it. He didn't buy it. He's 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 pretty much because the the way that he explained it was that because oh, of the pandemic, they loaned it to him. Yeah. Yeah. It was just essentially like, here, take my money and I'll keep this for the weekend and then you can have it back and then I'll take my money back. It's just kind of like a it was he just rented it, essentially. Mm-hmm. Um, but shit goes down. Dave Batista chokes and a chick oh, wait, gets wait, wait, shot. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> <laughs> can we talk about how blanc solved the murder mystery and... oh in three seconds yes, yes please. Immediately solved <laughs> that it, was my favorite which is so moment funny yeah that, i think that was like that was like 57 minutes into the movie or something like that it was like ha- it was like halfway through the movie or less than that yeah it was like like he 30 minutes it. in 40 minutes yeah. in he solves it in like three seconds he's like raises his hand really quick and he's like oh I've got it. <laughs> yep. And it's after he asks, he's like, so do we get a prize if we win? Yeah. And then, and then like Miles yeah. is pissed and he's like, what? You get it. You get an iPad. Okay. And he's like, and he no, wins. No, 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 no. He, he, no, he says, uh, he's like, well, what do we win? What, what, what do we win? What do you win? He's like, yeah. I mean, like you said that we win something. So like, do we win like an iPad or something? And he's like, yeah, yeah, you can win an iPad. Yeah. And he's like, oh, okay. I just, you know, thought that since you said win something, I don't, I don't need an iPad. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. It was so good, dude. It was so good. Oh, was and then so he gets funny. his iPad. Yeah, yeah. When he, <laughs> when he takes him upstairs after he ruins his whole weekend. Yeah, it's so funny. It's so funny, dude. It's so good. I honestly thought that this movie was a lot funnier than the first one. I thought that I had more comedic beats. Yeah, this, this movie definitely tried to be funnier. Yeah, like the whole the whole random like stoner dude, the I'm not here guy. Yeah. I <laughs> thought he was gonna be involved in the dude, film if more. He I thought been he the was murder, gonna I would get <laughs> thought he was gonna so funny. I thought he was going to be an accomplice with Miles. Yeah, that would have been a good one. That would have been sm- oh, that would have been smart, dude. That's a that's a good misdirection though, by the writer. Yeah. Is to just have a a bystander in in this fiasco yep that's really smart um but yeah so blanc figures out everything in like three seconds because he's (laughs) uh blanc is like wait has the game already started because at this point blanc blanc has been like snooping around 
and he's seen the Dave Batista's girlfriend messing around with Miles. Mm-hmm. He saw um Dave an Batista out- see that. Yep. Yeah, he saw that. He saw an out he heard an outburst from the governor, the governess lady um in the pool which su- made him suspicious. And then um we don't know this, but at the time we thought that Andy was Andy. Sorry, she's not. Spoiler. Um, and she had her little freak out under the cabana. And at that point, we were like, oh, shit. You know, so we had started putting puzzles together um, as the audience. But we were all be misdirected. Dun, dun, dun. Yep. Um, when, when was it? It was it was right after Batista died where um, Miles Braun, Edward Norton, is like running up to Blanc and is like, help me, help me, help me protect at 10 me. o'clock. Yeah, yeah, protect me, protect me at 10 o'clock. There's this thing. I, I thought it would have been funny. And, and then the lights all go out. And and then that's when another murder happens oh oh bum, real bum, quick bum. yeah Dave oh, Batista's yeah. character w- always has his gun on him and when he dies yeah. <laughs> everyone noticed his gun's gone his gun his gun was gone he always keeps it in like his underwear <laughs> and yep. uh so they they all reconvene and then this is where the movie starts being played and explained backwards. Well, yeah, because what happens is when the lights go out, everyone, because Anne, Annie at the time, what we think is Annie, runs yeah. off and goes. Yeah, because uh, she, she before, just got be- told by Batista that she was like the loser. Yeah, so she runs yeah. off. Whiskey goes after her. Uh, well, Dave, uh, Dave Batista dies. Whiskey, then Dave's girlfriend um goes after uh Anne and then Anne comes in screaming saying that uh that, I mean Whiskey comes in screaming saying that Anne's the killer. She she was rifling through all of our stuff and yeah. freaks out and then the lights go out. They're all running around and then when uh Blanc finally meets up with Anne and starts talking to her then she gets shot by a guy hidden in a mirror in the dark area that we don't see yet. Yeah. And then that's when we get the big reveal, which is that Anne is Anne. Anne is actually dead. And this Anne is, is her Anne's... sister. Yep. And they were just holding. They got the the police to hold off on reporting it to the public for a couple of days yeah. while they investigate this. Yeah. So pretty much what has happened is that the 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 writer of this movie they they pulled a pulp fiction and pretty much started us halfway through the movie and then caught us up through flashbacks for the rest of the movie until it's been caught up and then the rest of the movie plays out yep pretty much how every movie not every movie nowadays is made but like I feel like this is how a lot of movies are made nowadays. It's like, oh, let's give them a really good premise and then let's work up to this really good premise and then finish this premise, which I love. But we got like 20 flashbacks in a row of everybody's motive. Every like every reason why any opportunity could have been taken on Annie and it, it's it's really, really good because we get to see all of the characters' reasonings for potentially killing or being the killer. And I felt like I was actually able to play along and guess with the movie, if that makes sense. Does that make yeah. sense? Yeah. Yeah. And so we get, like, Blanc, Blanc meets Annie, and Annie got, in the beginning of the film, Annie, who is her sister, and I can't remember the sister's Hel- Helen. name. Helen's Helen. sister. Yeah. Helen re- uh, went to Annie's house, and that's when she received a box um, for, uh, to join this, like, to go on this vacation. And she just destroys it, because it's an elaborate, dumb puzzle. And she yeah. just destroys it, and then brings the destroyed box to Blanc tells them the story, tells them what they want to do, and they're twin sisters. So Blanc is like, we could go undercover. Yeah. And and, and Annie meticulously uh, wrote diaries about 
her journals every day of her whole life. And yeah. so the whole time, um, and, uh, Helen's going over the journals. And the big thing is Alpha was started by Anne and, uh, what's Yeah, by name? Annie and Miles Braun. Miles. Yeah. Annie and Miles. And then everyone else was like a part of it. Like her, the scientist friend was supposed to be like the, the brains behind the project, um, like to help them make a lot of their products. And then they had their friend who became the governor. Um, and she was going to push a lot to help with a lot of their, like, Hey, I need this bill to be passed. Yeah. Can you help me? And then they had uh, Dave Patista's character, who's like the influencer. And then they have, um, what's her name? Uh, do, I don't do, remember. Do Kate Hudson. Who does Kate Hudson play? She's the act. She plays like the Birdie. Birdie. We have Birdie, who's supposed to be like their the like the big star She's personality. A politically incorrect former supermodel turned fashion designer in Manhattan. That's her yep. description. <laughs> and and so she's just kind of like been there like face to the public for certain things. Yeah, all of them are like oddly kind of controversial people. Yeah, and or so... as what uh uh Edward Norton Miles Braun would say, a disruptor. Yes. And so, well, when this new fuel, which is what the whole thing's about, is yeah. Miles wanted to use a hydrogen-based fuel for, uh, a, for like, a... Clean uh, energy. A clean energy source. And Annie was like, you dumb fuck. You're yeah. going to, like, blow up everyone's houses and the cities are going to turn into, like, an, an atomic bomb. Yeah, and, and this, this product is called Clear. Yeah, and then... <laughs> And so she says, no, I'm not going to allow you to do that. And he's like, yes, you will. And he's, she's like, no. And he's like, well, if you don't let me do it, then I'm just going to kick you out of the company. And him and all the lawyers worked a way to kick her out really quickly. And before she knew it, she had nothing. And so she sued them. Yeah. But about intellectual property, because when they were in a bar together, all his friends, because Annie was friends with everyone else before miles was she brought miles to their friend group yeah she that... was like he was like the boyfriend yeah and and so she she wrote on a napkin for the disruptors and wrote on a napkin about all the ideas of what I they will, wanted to do i will say the thing that she did was document like what went on does that make sense like how it all was connected to miles and I just don't understand how that is like, like it's, it's evidence to be put against him for when clear does burn down millions of houses, you know, like that was the big thing. But for her to say like, all of it was my idea is like, why would you well, want all of that to be your idea? Well, she didn't want yeah. clear to be, to happen. Yeah, no, she That's, didn't. Yeah, exactly. She, That's the reason why she, she was she, saying alpha, yeah. the company was her idea. Because Alpha yeah. was her idea and how everyone was going to be connected and she was being kicked out of Alpha. So she was claiming intellectual property over Alpha. But it's like, and it's just then, because she put all the pieces together, it's hers? Well, it was her plan. She came up with the plan. She came up with the, the structure but and everything. It, but all she did was write it down. And Blanc put, like, well, Blanc made it all, not Blanc, sorry. Braun made it all happen. Well, no, they made just, it happen together. Yeah. Yes, but, like, the way that they described it in the movie is that, like, everything that he just said, like, magically happened, you know? Like, he could, like, predict the future is essentially what they were saying. And she just, like, puzzled it together. Well, I think the you thing know? is... And that's the thing, that's the thing that, like, I just didn't get, I guess, in well, this movie. It, this, the lawsuit was less about she owns it all and more about... I I was integral to the beginning of this. I can't be kicked out of this so unworthily. I deserve some of it. Because she got none of the money when she was kicked out or anything. She's yeah. like, I deserve no, at least royalties. Sense. Yeah, that makes like, sense. Like, I sense. deserve something. Like, yeah. I deserve... No, that does make sense. Some type of payment. Yeah. Um. And so, but she didn't have the napkin to prove it. And on the stand, all of her friends betrayed lies. her and lied and said that miles wrote the napkin not her yep. 
And then later, he found the napkin. Yeah, quote, unquote. And, and showed it to everyone. And, um, and then what we find throughout the film is Annie actually found the napkin and sent the email out to everyone in a red letter. Mm-hmm. And, and then that's when we get uh, a long and we see like behind the scene and I recommend watching the movie because a lot of like the flashbacks and cuts I don't want to necessarily I don't think you and I either want to no, go through I'm all not, of it. I don't want to <laughs> but throughout this the whole time like while they're on the island Blanc and Helen are like working together yeah and because, because she decides to go undercover with him on the island yeah so we, and... we, we get to see all of the interactions between all of the interactions that we saw yes so it's like it's essentially you're just watching the movie again you're seeing a different point of view you didn't get to see exactly and and so then we when she gets shot she actually the bullet gets stopped by one <laughs> the of the little journals. book yeah yeah which i think is a little bull but this mention of I mean, I mean, depending on how thick and the book was and what caliber the gun was, I mean, sure. I don't know. I don't know anything about guns or density, so. Look, that book did not look that thick enough. To, it was a pocket Dude, notebook. It was like, a pocket notebook. It was like a, phones, a travel phones journal. Phones have stopped bullets before. Yeah, but they have to be denser than a pocket notebook. Yeah, but that thing, that thing's thick. It's got a front it and a back and a bunch of papers. But it didn't look that thick. It looked like maybe dude, that that the the binding dude the the what the book was made what if the book was like made out of tungsten you know what if a it tungsten was real, yeah what if it was real heavy man what if all know. the pages were lined in gold i mean you know gold is malleable what if they were all lined in tungsten <laughs> That's um, what I mean, you never know <laughs> uh, but yeah pretty much she survives so and no. while and then Blanc... rubs hot sauce all over her chest to, yeah to make it look <laughs> when it like goes she... up her... okay dude when it goes up her nose and she like flips over and like sneezes or whatever and they're like halfway up the stairs i'm just like what the fuck how did you how uh, what <laughs> how did no one notice that yeah how did no one just hear a dead body sneeze <laughs> um but blanc brings them all inside to go over the mystery while to go over the murder while annie the dead person uh, runs Helen around. runs around to try to find the letter because we figured out that while this happened, um, Dave went to Helen's for uh, to Annie's first. Uh, you talking then... about the influencer dude? Yes, Duke. Dave Batista. Duke. Um, Duke. Duke yeah. went to Annie's place to talk to her about the letter, but she wasn't home. And on his uh way uh, on his way there, he nearly got hit by a car which we figure out later was Miles. Mm-hmm. Um, and then when uh, and then a couple other people showed up. And so then we figure out Miles actually went to Annie's and he killed her. Yeah. Um, dun, and dun, took dun. the letter. Mm, the napkin. Nope, nope, he never took it. Yeah, he hid the he... napkin. Oh, he did. Did he hide it? Yes, he hid the letter. Like, he kept it. In oh, the red envelope right. got and it, hit got it. it. The, yeah, 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 yeah. Sorry. And and so then, uh, when Annie's looking around, when Helen's looking around up in the glass onion, she sees yep. the napkin, and she walks out and shows she has proof of it. And they're all like, "How are you alive?" Blah. And ah. shows she has proof of the napkin. And then Miles does. Dude, Miles has some big ass cojones because he just walks up and burns the napkin. Yeah. Well, I, it, I it's smart. <laughs> He's it just, is. he's fucking smart, dude. And he's the smartest dumbass you'll ever meet. He's like, yeah, so, he's smart but dumb, so dumb at the same time. Oh like, yeah, he's constantly making up words and it's like stealing ideas. And Blanc is constantly pointing out, like, dude, you're a dumbass. You're not yeah. creative. You're not unique. Yeah. And the reason why he burnt the napkin is because there's proof that his nap, her napkin was real and his napkin wasn't. Because it actually had the branding uh, from the bar that was shut down years ago. Yeah, the original like glass onion. Yes, where because they that's, all that's where that. it all started. Was that yep. he he owned a bar that was called Glass Onion? Or I don't something think he owned like it, but they went to that bar. Yeah, I I equated it to him owning it because I just imagined him being a prick. <laughs> um, 
but I'm surprised he didn't buy the bar uh, he after did. he got rich. Yeah. Um, but uh, then uh, they get a long monologue about – she's like, okay, well, we still have witnesses. <laughs> Speaking because... of monologues, dude, Ethan Hawke is in this movie. Ethan Hawke? Yeah, Mr. Monologue from uh, – from, uh... He is, Miles' yeah. assistant. Yeah, he, he... – he uh he's the one who coat throats all of them oh like, yes yes yeah. he is he gets out of the car and he's like okay everybody i'm gonna need you to take your masks off and open your mouth and then he walks yep. around and pff, pff, pff. but yeah when he showed up i was like oh no we're gonna get a monologue oh, no. sorry uh, <laughs> you're good and then pretty much blanc also when he's going over how miles did it all he's like he even poisoned he not poisoned but he gave day uh duke an allergic reaction like what we didn't see that and we're like yeah you did think about it don't think about what he said he said he picked up his drink which had orange in there yeah um, and but then, and, but yeah. really what happened yeah i think no it wasn't orange it was pineapple i think I it, don't was, remember. It, was pi- it was pineapple yeah but really what happened was he handed it to him yep. and they're all like oh no and then after he burns a napkin he's like did anyone oh, no, see wait. that? The best, the best line is that uh, you poisoned him. Well, gave him allergic reaction, and then uh, Birdie's like, uh, and then well, Blanc is like, it's so stupid, or something like that, and then Birdie's like, it's so stupid, it's smart, or something like that, and Blanc's just like, no, it's not. It's just stupid. <laughs> mm-hmm. It made me happy. Sorry. And then, uh, and then Blanc is like, yeah. And your one good idea was bringing a ton of people here that would want to murder you, so it can't be your fault. Holy shit! You stole that from me because yeah, he mentioned yeah, it the, yeah. in the first like ten minutes of yeah. him being on the island. When when they're when they're up in the glass onion after uh, Braun is like, you know, I don't know who invited you or something like that. Like after no, it's after he ruins his kill, like after he ruins him being murdered. After he figures out Birdie in like three seconds. Yeah. He he goes up there and he's like, "Why would you why would you bring a bunch of people? Like it would it would just be like bringing all these people and then turning the lights off or something like that." And then he's like later in the movie, he's like, "What the fuck? <laughs> this was my idea. You you just did what I told you to do." Mhm. And so then he burns the napkin and then gaslights them all and they all agree to be gaslit. Um yeah. and he's like he's like, "Did you guys see a napkin?" no no and then and then the blanc's like look i can't do anything but you can yeah that's when yeah annie starts going and he slips her the crystal clear because miles being the fucking asshole he is shows off that to everyone well dude after after he tossed it to blanc that one scene in that you he know, kept that it. scene he yeah he never got it back from blanc yep yeah and Even stupid and so he hands it off to her she starts breaking tons of glass and goes on like a rampage and then everyone oh, else yeah. joins oh, in yeah. and then miles being the dumbass miles is he because he wanted to look at the mona lisa face face to face he installed a fail, uh, installed a, uh, a, a a switch to turn off the safety protocols. Yeah, and he reveals that at the, at the very beginning, essentially. Yep. And so while she's she's destroying everything, she then throws the crystal and blows up like yeah. A she huge... makes a bonfire in the middle of his glass onion living room, like she literally burns down, like his living room and, and then, then and then does what you're about to say <laughs> yep because the whole fucking uh onion is written uh, is is working on clear because he wanted to prove it can work yeah again again everybody clear is hydrogen based alternative fuel yep and <laughs> Do you so want to know whole... what else was a hydrogen based alternative fueled machine the hindenburg <laughs> yep and so pretty much like Everything starts blowing up. The whole glass onion's well, on dude, fire. She, thro- she throws the crystal into the fucking bonfire. And yep. then it just instantly goes up into the air vents. And then you just see 
his whole complex on this little island just yep and, and while and i was like when i saw that i was like how could blanc just allow her to murder five people <laughs> Yeah, he uh, just at that walks point. away, dude. He just walks <laughs> away and just allows her to murder people. Like no she could have killed. No I'm saying. Died. I'm saying <laughs> she could have killed all of them. Walked down onto that beach and sat down next to him, and he wouldn't I, have known. That's what I don't I'm think. I don't think Blanc cared at that point. I no, mean, he, he didn't they all because he didn't have die. evidence. Yeah, he didn't have any evidence. It was like he wasn't even there. So she and, could have murdered all of them, and he would have been like, "Did you do it?" Yep. <laughs> And so then everything starts to burn, uh, and then we get a slow mo race between her and Miles to fight over uh, the yep. the button, the button, and then the little, uh, the little gnome elf thingy. <laughs> yep, and then she hits the button. The Mona Lisa catches on flames, yeah. and they all walk out in ashes. And Miles starts throwing a fit, and everyone starts laughing. And then uh, my favorite line, oh, my. Favorite favorite line of the movie is miles like you still don't have any proof he's like oh idiot. yeah yeah the glass onion went on fire your reputation is ruined yeah no one's gonna get clear your island just blew up yeah you and, just burnt the most famous it, painting <laughs> yeah it's like you just burnt the mona lisa you miles you know one thing though you got your wish your name will always be in the same sentence yep. as the Mona Lisa. I was yep. like, oh, yeah, because he's always going to be known as the man who burned the Mona Lisa. Yeah. I'm like, it's such a fucking fire line. Yeah. Literally. It's so ah, good. Go. It's so good. And then everyone finally decides to get their Miles dick out of their mouth and says yeah, they or, saw Or as, as the movie refers it to as quit sucking on the golden teat <laughs> yep and and so then they all you, say you that got they his saw in your mouth <laughs> yep they they say they all saw miles going down to annie's house and they saw yeah, miles they they were they all saw... like oh we do have the evidence don't we <laughs> yeah they just all decide to col to collaborate their stories like they did once but this time yeah. for good because one of the things that helen yells about is helen's like what you'll you'll lie for him, but you won't lie for the truth. Exactly. Yup, it's insane. And did did you like the subtle nods throughout the entire movie that was like hinting that Helen was the Mona Lisa? Did you catch that? No. How she would do like every once in a while, the camera would stay on her face, and she would because the way that Blanc talks about the Mona Lisa, like. You never know if she's smiling or afraid or sad or, or you know, like, you can't tell because, like, her face is, like, looking at you and not looking at you at the same time. So you never know the expression of the Mona Lisa, right? Yeah. They zoom in on Helen's face so many times in this movie to display that exact emotion. You should rewatch it and look for it. They do it like six or seven times, dude. They okay. finish. They finish the movie with a scene of slowly zooming in on her, smiling like the Mona Lisa. Sorry, that was my little rant. Uh, no, you're good. I'll it. have to. I'll have to <laughs> keep an eye out for that. Yeah, it's I... a it's a really cool little thing. But yeah, that's kind of the movie. It is. That is practically it. It's a. It's it's so. There's much more to it. Oh yeah, there's but, la there's layers. But it's <laughs> one of those type of movies where <laughs> like an onion, um, like a ogre. Thank you. That was a good. Yep, um, thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> um, but, oh, by the way, the new Puss in Boots movie's out. You should watch it. I'll talk to you about it later. But um, I've I've good. heard great things. It's very good. It's very entertaining. It, Jiminy Cricket is my favorite cricket in the world in that movie. I love it. Um, but yeah, so. I it it's one of those movies like the original I was at where it's like murder mystery cut 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 veil ripped from your eyes veil ripped from your eyes the veil yeah. you thought wasn't there is ripped from your eyes and then your eyes are ripped yeah. from your eyes and put in new eyes and and you see the things for what they really are but never mind they were all illusions here are the things that they really were yeah it's um, just it's just so <laughs> many masks and so many substitution jutsus it's just fucking <laughs> yeah. insane but it's really like 
It's I liked it. I thought it was a good second movie. Like I feel yeah, like they can one of the really... things you have to experience for yourself is what I was saying. But yeah, continue. It, I feel like it's a real like if they were to ke- if he if the director were to keep on making these movies because it's like Glass Onion, a Knives Out movie, right? So it's yeah, like yeah, it's it's of its own genre. Like I could see how they could really make a franchise out of these movies of just like one off mis- like murder mystery movies. And I really like that. I really like it. I I, really I do like too. It. I think they could. My only fear is then they're gonna get really tropey with it, and I mean, get they, I mean, the first less... one was the first well, one. They're and gonna the second get one was. But my fear is the tropey parts aren't the problem. It's you still have to be creative with how you use oh, the tropes. Oh yeah, hundred percent. And and this movie was good, and I thought it was creative, and it, it and it pulled me in, and I really liked it, especially because it was nothing like the first movie. Facts, facts. My fear is that they're going to end up being less creative as they go on. But, you know, I'd be down for a third one. Yeah, I mean, um, really all they would have to do is just play a game of Clue and then make a game about it. Or make a movie yeah. about it. <laughs> well, he says he's bad at Clue. Yeah, no, um, I know. I, know. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he also sucked it among us. Like, he, all yes. he did was stand there. And he, and... I love that they had Kareem Abdul the bar. At, yeah. oh, wow, I said his name wrong, but Kareem. I, I knew who you meant. Uh, I love that they had him as one of the people he's playing Among Us with. Yeah, I loved it too. But I like this movie. I I still like the first one better, but I enjoyed it. Yeah, I I think the first one is a better murder mystery, and I think this one is a be- is a better puzzle. Yeah, I think the reason I like the first one better is because the main character that you're supposed to sympathize and empathize and root for is there the whole movie the reason i think i dislike this movie a little bit less is you don't know who you're rooting for the yeah. first hour of the film the first Honestly, hour and a half like yeah it's i think it's an hour and a half i don't remember for sure it, it's it's about it's it's over half of the movie you yeah, really you, don't know which who, character to back and you, you yeah. don't know who you're rooting for so you're just enjoying the characters you have but you the first movie you know who you want to root for you know who you're sympathizing with and you might like certain characters more than others personally i loved chris evans in the first film Hmm. my favorite asshole of the year um but like in this film it's like yeah i i enjoy dave batista i think he's cool lionel the scientist i think is really cool the governor's cool birdie's hot whiskey's hot i like their personalities they're they're cool characters but it's like the governor of her name is claire Claire, thank you. No, outside of, outside of like Blanc, Blanc is really the person you're rooting for, but he's not supposed to be. He's the detective. He's supposed to be the tool, the the character the audience sees the yeah. movie through. They, they, and so the movie we don't... allows you to like root for multiple people, though. I think that's the it, thing that I liked about it. It, well. it does, and I do like that, but they're all kind of suspects in that oh, way, yeah, too. Oh, yeah, And so, like, it's, it's like you're rooting for them, but they're all kind of assholes. There's not, like, a character for you to, like, sympathize with until Helen's introduced, Exactly, really. which is far along. When, Which is when I think, once you know who Helen is, that's personally when I think the movie gets really good. From that yeah. point forward, I think Yeah, that's practically the movie... where the movie starts. <laughs> that that's personally in my opinion when the movie hits on all cylinders because up until that point the movie just feels like a lot of build-up yeah and it's like, just okay. all information yeah well and it's like up until they reveal who helen is like once he- annie got shot i was like what's going on here guys i like, really thought like, that it was a game of among us like when they until were... that point i was really about it well, and like when they got when they when Blanc solved the the fake murder game because I thought the murders were gonna happen while they were playing the game, is how I thought they were gonna play it. Mm. But when he solved the 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 game of Clue pretty much right away, I was like, okay, well, now what? <laughs> what are you gonna do now? And they're all just moping on the couches. I'm like, okay, where? How are we gonna evolve this? Like right now, all we have is drama between characters. Yeah. That's all we have right now. We don't have a murder. We don't have anything. And then Dave dies. And it's like, okay, it's starting to pick up a little bit. And then Anne, and then, Anne, and then dies. Anne dies. And I'm like, okay, what, what the fuck are we doing here? And then they show who Helen is. I'm like, oh, 
okay, now yeah. you have me. Now yeah. I'm really interested. The only problem is it took an hour and a half to get there, which is, I think, the biggest critique I would have of the film. Yeah. I like it, and I still think overall it was good, and I get why they did it that way. But, like, the thing about the first film is, like, you have who you're supposed to root for, and you know who died. Now you know, yeah. now yeah. you're trying to solve what happened. And those things are presented to you within the first ten minutes of the film. Like, everything is outlined everywhere. And you know what's, you know what's going on. And then you grow connections for other characters. Where this film, you don't know who died. And you don't know who you're going to root for until an hour and a half in. Outside yeah. the characters that you just naturally, like, gleam towards or like. Like, I don't know. Personally. Just, it, that's my biggest critique of it. I, I enjoyed it, especially from that point forward. But I think that's probably why I think it's worse, is for that reason. Yeah. An hour and ten minutes. Okay. Ha- literally literally Half- halfway through the movie pretty much yeah i feel we, like they have get... to reveal that like 30 minutes in, yeah. 20 minutes in like not yeah. an hour and 10 minutes in i think i think it was i i like i mean i'm not a fan personally of when stories do circles to explain a very basic like annie got fricked Right, she got she got she got fricked over. Like with the whole like like being kicked out of um Alpha, is that what it was called? Yeah. Being kicked yeah. out of Alpha, like she got fricked over, right? And like let's just say if we were to properly align all of the flashbacks to make an actual murder movie, like murder mystery movie, but not have the mystery about it. I think I would have liked this movie more. Like, actually, literally, play, like, literally played it out. Yeah, not, I think... And not, like, let's start in the middle, and then an hour in, we'll go into the past, like, 15 years, and give you as much information in the next 40 minutes. 40 minutes of flashbacks, essentially. And, like, retelling the same story of them getting on the island, him tying a shoe, her exploring around the complex, running into this guy, drinking too much kombucha, and getting fucked up off of kombucha, and almost ruining the entire thing. And then, like, it's, it just doesn't make sense. I, I think that's I, the thing that I don't like, is that, it's like, why not just I, tell the story linearly instead of, like, chopping it up backwards, re-explaining everything? It's creative and it's beautiful, but, like... I think it was unneeded. It's just un. It's unneeded. It makes it complicated, and it makes your brain have to work to put the pieces in, which is satisfying to do. Because if you can do that before you get the answer of the movie, it's like nice. I figured it out. But sometimes, you know, I just want to watch them. I just want to watch a good murder mystery. Well, and this and- was a good murder mystery, but I just want like a. a- a linear one and i don't want to have to put a fuck ton of brain power behind it but i also enjoy it so well and my thing too is i don't think i i i think they could have done like the first 10 minutes the same and then before they all meet up at the dock that's when they show her like or when when blanc when blanc gets the hey blanc you have someone here for you. That's when we meet Helen, and we yeah, learn no, yeah, what happened. Yeah, properly, and then, proper and then, timeline. Yeah, yeah, and then did it from that point forward. And I think it would have been great because I agree. Because then we could see it develop, and then we would have known kind of like, hey, he, we know something you don't. And I'm yeah. fine with like the cut back to actually what happened. I don't mind those in movies. My only issue with issue with it in this movie is as a murder mystery, not knowing who's murdered for over half of the movie is kind of a problem. Yeah. Personally, I think that's the biggest problem. Even well, I mean, despite... we, at, we were tricked into thinking that the murder was supposed to be on Duke. Well, no, no, I'm talking about, like, before, okay, we're an hour in, because it's kind of like an hour in once Duke dies, because then it's the yeah. ten minutes of chaos. Exactly, So. Yeah. 
an hour into the film is when we learn okay there's a murder like i don't yeah, know there's, I feel a, like a, there's murder a mystery... real problem instead yeah. of just what we were given yeah yeah i think a murder mystery needs to have a murder afoot within it quickly so then you have something to solve yeah it just didn't feel like anything was being solved for an hour and then we learned everything was being solved and i get why you did it because it's cutesy but i just feel like this was the wrong movie to do that in yeah i would i would genre this like people like it's it's li- literally listed as like a murder mystery game kind of thing um like it's a murder mystery i would honestly classify this as like a comedy murder mystery or like a a murder comedy because as yes i know it is still a mystery but like there i this movie was comedically more funny there were way more beats in this movie at least for me there were way more funny beats in this movie because the first one i felt took very seriously and had like physical gags right with like um the girl like when the dog brings the 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 broken um ladder thing and she like throws it right and then like turns Mm -hmm. around really quick like in the first movie i find that hilarious right and oh yeah yeah it was like subtle physical comedy in the first one but this one was like verbal absurdity comedy where it's like dave batista having a pistol in his crotch while he's swimming and then shooting it in the air like that's absurd like that's absurd comedy and it it was of course it's going to be absurd because they're called the disruptors so like (laughs) it's it's crazy (laughs) i think another one of my favorite parts in this uh is when birdie got her email for uh her signing off on a sweatshop and uh her assistant was like birdie you didn't think that a sweatshop makes sweats did you and she's like that's what they do yeah (laughs) (laughs) well she's not wrong they did make sweatpants yeah exactly and and her assistant's just like no give me your phone (laughs) yeah i can't have my secret phone anymore no (laughs) (laughs) well if you liked this episode of the noted podcast uh subscribe because that'd help us out and uh do you got anything to say daniel Well, you guys have a beautiful night, and this has been Noted. Hey!